So in this week's video, we're kind of doing a follow-up to the video I did last week where we talked about a giant storm that was going to about to hit us and we got bitter bitter cold and some snow and blizzard conditions. So we took a bunch of footage to show you what it's like up here during all this. We showed you some things that you can do that are fun when it's 30 below and we showed you so we, we filmed some driving scenes to show you what it's like driving in this and we'll also talk about some things you can do to your house to protect your house and protect your pipes and everything from this type of cold. So let's go take a look. So all of this footage in this video was taken the week before Christmas in December of 2022 and I did a video last week about this coming storm and some of the websites that you can use whether it's for this storm or any other one, to look out at the road conditions. It'll help with your travel, all the different websites to show you the webcams around the state. Anyway, if you haven't watched it, watch that one first. This is the storm that I was talking about. Uh, this was taken as we were driving up to Corum, which is up near Glacier Park. We were going to go look at a listing that day. And part of the reason I wanted to make this video is just to show everybody that even in these huge storms like this, everyone here in Montana just kind of rolls with it. And there's just things you need to do to be careful, obviously. And if you don't have to drive, then don't. But people still work and we were working and I just wanted to get some footage. I was driving. My wife was actually taking the footage. So don't worry there. But as you can see, the roads were pretty bad on this day. Uh, this is up in the canyon just north of Columbia Falls, and it gets really windy in here. So this is always a bad spot during a storm. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool to show you guys what, what it's like. I've seen it a lot worse than what this is, but this was a pretty pretty ugly day to be driving. And as you see, when uh, big trucks go by, there's a semi coming up here. It kind of creates a whiteout and you can't see anything for a minute, as you can see right here. But there are things you can do to protect yourself. And one of the things you can do is make sure you have good tires on your car. So as you can see here, you can either get the real heavy treaded winter tires or a lot of people use the studded tires like these. And there's numerous different types of winter tires you can get. Uh, we always use studs. It just makes us feel a little safer when you get on the black ice. Uh, days like today, you, the studs aren't that necessary. Believe it or not, it's still uh, the ground is still pretty tacky when the roads are like this. So it's not too bad unless you slam on the brakes and you know go too fast. But the main thing uh, in conditions like this is just to go slow have good tires, and keep an eye on the people in front of you. Don't get too close. We see a lot of people that just move up here, and they're used to driving down south, and they'll get right on people's tail. And like I said, no matter what kind of tires you have, if you slam on the brakes on these real icy roads, uh, you'll slide right into the guy in front of you. So another thing to be aware of if you're new to this area or experiencing your first blizzard up here. And the other thing that's very important to have is if you do end up in the ditch, we have a lot of areas up here that don't have cell service and you may have to spend some time in your car. So it's always good to have a sleeping bag in there, uh, some gloves, boots, uh, a shovel, and any kind of winter survival kit. And if you need one, I've got one linked down below. Uh, but always a good bet. Uh, a safe bet to have one of those with you because you just never know what's going to happen. It may not even be your fault. It could be the guy in front of you that <laughs> causes a problem and you end up in the ditch. So uh, just be safe if you're up here and, and keep all these things in mind, especially if you're not used to driving in conditions like these. So this particular storm, it, it looks worse right now than it actually was. We didn't get tons of snow. We probably got about six inches, but the problem, it was windy and blowing around and, and that causes visibility issues, as you can see. But then the next day, after this, it cleared out and it got bitter, bitter cold. And when I'm talking bitter, bitter cold, in Whitefish, it was 28 below zero regular temperature. And then the wind chill was minus 42. And it even got as cold down by Butte, 
Uh, I forget the name of the town, but I believe they had a wind chill that was 70 below zero that day. Uh, so check this out. I've always wanted to try this out. Uh, they talked about it in science class in school, but you throw a pan of boiling water up in the air when it's this cold and it instantly evaporates. So that was our little experiment for this day. So after that, we had to drive down to Big Fork and we went down through Kalispell and the good news and the bad news of days like this is it's crystal clear, perfectly blue skies, but you you don't want to go outside if you don't have to because it is cold and it hurts. Uh, I know I put the temperature up earlier, but when you're out there and you that wind hits you at 40 below zero, you definitely feel it. And it freezes your skin almost instantly, any skin that isn't covered. So again, that's why if you don't have a sleeping bag and gear in your car and you break down, you could get in a lot of trouble pretty quick when it's this cold out. So as you can see here in downtown Kalispell, they plowed all the snow to the middle of the road. So uh, you have to navigate that as well. And here we are down coming into Big Fork and you see that cloud bank out there. That isn't clouds, that's actually steam coming off of Flathead Lake. And it's kind of a cool thing to see. Flathead Lake rarely freezes over, and even now it's not frozen over, even after this cold. Uh, the, bays will f the bays will freeze over close to shore, but the middle of the lake will not. And the lake is 30 miles long by 15 miles wide, so there's a pretty large expanse of open water out there in the middle of the lake that never freezes over. Uh, it never has since I've been here, and I've been here over 21 years now. Uh, but on days like this, as we get closer, you can see that's all steam coming up off the lake. And it just it covered it covered the lake all day long. Uh, and it just sat there, but it looked kind of weird because everything else, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. But down here along Flathead Lake, it looked like another storm was rolling in. But all that is is the steam coming up from the water that hasn't froze yet, frozen yet because it's way warmer than the air temperature at this time. So one of the things we have to do at our house, if uh, this window right here that you see, it's right next to the front door, is uh, the kitchen window and the sink is right there. And so the sink and the dishwasher are up against this outside wall. And a couple, few years ago, we had a line freeze when it got this cold. And so now what we do is we open the cabinets at night and we just put this little space heater right there and it saves us another broken line. Uh, we had, the, it was a line for the dishwasher that broke and it ran the whole cycle and basically we came back in the house and it was raining in our basement. So another thing you gotta think about when you're in this type of weather. Thank you for watching our video. Please call, text, or email for more information and don't forget to watch our other videos about Montana.